Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 2, Atomic Structure. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 2.1, which is Bohr's Atomic Model, Part 3 of the video. So in this video, we're going to focus on performing the calculation involving the right bug equation for the Lyman, Balmer, Passion, Bracket, and Pifan series, where we're going to use the formula of 1 over lambda is equal to RH1 over N1 square minus 1 over N2 square. And the RH value here is a little bit different, where RH here is refers to 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7 per meter, and the value of N1 is less than N2. For the learning outcome of H, I, and J, we're going to cover that in the next part of the, of the video, which is in part 4. So without any further ado, let us start with part 3 of the video first. So, right, but equation. So in the previous video, you have looked about a different equation and formulas that you have covered in part 1. And in this video, you have looked into a new formula, which is 1 over lambda is equal to RH1 over Ni square minus 1 over N2 square. And as what you can see, this formula here is almost similar to this formula here. So what are the relationship between these two formulas? So basically, they are the same, they are coming from the same basic formula, but they have different RH value. Why is that? Okay, so under, to understand more about this, let us look on how we can interconvert this formula into that formula. Okay, so as what you know, delta he here can be converted into hc over lambda because we know that delta e is equal to hc over lambda and these two equations basically focus on the same thing which is we focus on the emission of photon and it involves the transition of electron from a high energy level to a lower energy level and because of this emission processes Usually, delta E here, you will get a negative value. If, for example, negative 1.55 kilojoule per mole. Okay. And this negative value here refers to energy is being released due to emission. And as for that reason, the negative here is significant. So we put the negative value here. And then. The RH here, we just need to copy back. And then same goes to 1 over Ni square minus Nf square. Okay, now we want to bring this um, expression into this expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring HC on the right hand side. So it's going to be RH over hc because hc here going to be bring downwards and then 1 over ni square minus 1 over nf square just copy back again like normal and then if we were to expand that our h here refers to 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joules okay the negative is still here and then hc H refers to a Planck constant, which is 6.6256 times 10 to the power of negative 34 joule per second. And then our C here refers to a speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. And then 1 over Ni square and minus 1 over Nf square, you just copy back again. Okay, so now if you were to solve this term here in the calculator, you can see that joule and joule can be cancelled out, second and per second can be cancelled out, and you are left with the unit of meter. But meter is in the denominator, so you will get per meter. Okay, and the value, if you were to calculate that in the calculator, you will get 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7. Okay, and then 1 over lambda here, we just copy back like normal, 
but the negative sign here, we can put that and expand it inside the bracket. So it's going to be because the negative and f square, right? So when we put negative there, it's going to become positive minus 1 over n i square because from positive multiply by negative it's going to become negative so as what you can see here 1 over lambda is equal to 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7 per meter which where here refers to r h on this side here okay and 1 over lambda here refers to 1 over lambda and then 1 over n f square Basically, we change it into n i square, n one square, and then for the initial, we change it into n two. Okay, and as what you know that um, it focuses on emission, where n two will be higher level than n one. Okay, so it always. For emission, it only drop, for example, n equal to 7, drop to n equal to 1. And for that reason, n2 is always greater than n1. And this is how we interconvert this formula here into this formula here. So basically, they are the same thing, but they are used for different purposes. For example, if you are using delta E here, which is referring to energy, you need to use the RH here, which have the unit of joules, because unit energy is in the unit of joules. Meanwhile, for 1 over lambda here, is needed when we need to find wave length or wave number. And the RH value here need to be in the unit of meter or per meter here. Okay, so that is where we, we find the relation between these two. And I hope you can see that um, this equation interdependent uh, between one another and it's not something that you that you just memorize it. Okay, it has a connection. Okay, so to understand more about this, let us look into the example. So for example, number one, we need to calculate the wavelength of the fourth line in the Balmer series of the hydrogen. So calculate the wavelength and it involves the fourth line. So for this reason, we need to find the fault line of the Balmer series. So for the to understand more about the fault line, we can look it in terms of the energy level diagram. So you know that the first line, uh, you know that the Balmer series will have the ground state of n equal to 2. Okay? So it needs to drop to n equal to 2. So the first line comes from 3 equal to 1. So this is the first line. Second line. 4 is equal to 2. Third line, 5 is equal to, the uh, 5 drops to 2, number 3. And the fourth line, 6 is equal to, 6 is dropped to 2, the fourth line. So you know that the transition of electron is from n equal to 6 to n equal to 2, which is the emission process. And for that reason, our n2 going to be 6 and our ni going to be 2. And since we are lo looking to find the wavelength, we need to use the formula of 1 over lambda is equal to rh 1 over n i square n 1 square minus 1 over n 2 square. Okay, and you know that the n 1 here is going to be lesser than n 2. Okay, but still the rating kepada yang rendah. So n 2 need to be greater than n 1. And remember, because you are finding a wavelength which is in the unit of meter, so your RH here need to be in the unit of per meter. Okay, so 1 over lambda here, RH, you just substitute that in. Okay, 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7 per meter. And our N1 here refers to 2 square, don't forget the square. And our N2 here is equal to 6 square. Okay, and then you will calculate this part first, and this will have a unit of per meter because of per meter here. And now you need to inverse, bring the lambda to the left hand to the right hand side, and this term here is going to be bring to the left hand side, 
And lastly, you're going to get lambda to be 4.10 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meter. Okay, so this is how you find the lambda. Now, for example number 2. So, for example number 2, the transition is associated with the second line in the Balmer series of the hydrogen spectrum. Determine the wavelength in nanometer, its frequency and energy of the transition. So, as what you know that the Balmer series will have a ground state of n is equal to 2. And the second line here refers to Okay, for the first line is 3 is equal to 2, and for the second line is 4 going to 2. So this is the second line. So the second line of Balmer series is going to be n equal to 4 to n equal to 2, and the n2 here must be greater than n1, which is equal to 2. And since we need to find wavelength, so we're going to use the formula of 1 over lambda is equal to rh, 1 over n1 square minus 1 over n2 square. Okay. And then you know that n1 is lesser than n2, just to double check. And your rh here, again, you need to use 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7. Because some of you might do a mistake of substituting rh here to be 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joules, which is wrong. Because this rh here is used to find energy. And this rh value here is used to find wavelength. Okay, so we really need to be careful. And then we need to substitute the value, which is 1 over lambda. Rh here is equal to 1.097. And then n1 is 2 square. And n2 is 4 square. So you finish up this term first in order to avoid mistake. So you will get 1 over lambda is equal to 2.0569 times 10 to the power of 7 per meter. And then in order to find wavelength, we just, we just need to inverse this one. So we're going to get 4.86 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meter. However, the question asks us to write it in terms of nanometer. So nanometer here refers to times 10 to the power of negative 9. So time from negative 7 to negative 9, we're going to bring it to 2 decimal places to the right hand side. So lastly, we're going to get 486 times 10 to the power of negative 9 meter, in which this term here can be changed into nano. So lastly, it's going to be 486 nanometer. Okay, and for question B, it's frequency. So you already know the wavelength, okay, and you can determine the frequency by using the formula of V is equal to C over lambda. So your speed of light here is equal to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. And then your wavelength here is in the meter unit because here is the nanometer. So meter and meter are going to be cancelled out. And then once you do the maths here, you're going to get 6.173 times 10 to the power of 14 per second. Or you can put it as hertz. Okay, and for question number C, the energy of the transition. So for the for the energy of the transition, you already you can use different various formula. So for example, the easiest one is to use this formula, which is delta E is equal to Hv, because you already know the frequency here. So H here is our Planck constant, which is six point six two five six times 10 to the power of negative 34 joule per second and then we need to multiply by the sorry, multiply by 6.173 times 10 to the power of 14 per second which is obtained from here so second and per second can be cancelled out and lastly you're going to get 4.09 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joule you can also use the formula of delta e is equal to hc over lambda. Okay, so c here is the speed of light, lambda you already obtained here, so you can also get the same answer. Or you can use delta e is equal to rh 1 over ni square minus 1 over nf square. 
you can also get the same answer but then your RH here you're going to use 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joules so either of this formula will get to the same answer all right so for example 3 the transition of electron involves the last line of the hydrogen spectrum in the Lyman series so we have to determine the wavelength the frequency as well as the wave number where the wave number here is given as 1 over lambda so for the Lyman series the ground state here going to be n is equal to 1 and the last line of the hydrogen atom is not equal to 6 However, it is, the is, it is the furthest away from the nucleus. So the last line here is supposed to be n equal to infinity. And this is the point where, we, where we're going to see the convergence limit. Because after 6, you're going to get 7, 8, 9, 10, and then at the last line, refers to n equal to infinity. Okay, so we know that for the Lyman series, our n1, which is our ground state, is equal to 1, and our n2 refers to the infinity. So from infinity, it drops to n equal to 1. So in order to find the wavelength, we need to use the formula of 1 over lambda is equal to rh 1 over n1 square minus 1 over n2 square. And double check, your n1 need to be smaller than n2. And your rh value here, since you are using since you want to find the wavelength, so your RH here needs to use 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7 per meter. So you're going to substitute in the value of RH here. And then N1 here refers to 1 and N2 here refers to infinity. So uh, here you need to be very careful because 1 over divided by infinity square is going to equal to 0. Okay, so you can imagine it as one kick, you have one whole kick, satu kick, and then you need to share it, share the kick with millions of people. So what you're gonna get is 0.00000 percent of the kick, which is very very little, and approximately it is equal to zero. So at last you're gonna get one here because one over one is equal to one. So one over lambda is equal to 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7 and the unit is per meter but now you want wavelength so you're going to inverse this uh, digit here so you're going to get 9.116 times 10 to the power of negative 10 meter so this is the wavelength and for the frequency you can find it by using the formula of v is equal to c over lambda so c here refers to the speed of light which is 3.00 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second and your lambda here is gotten from the previous question which is 9.116 times 10 of negative 8 meter so meter and meter can be cancelled out and once you calculate that you're going to get 3.29 times 10 of 15 per second or you can also write it in terms of hertz and for the last question the wave number so you know that the wave number is equal to 1 over lambda and apparently you have calculated it here where the 1 over lambda is equal to 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7 per meter. So you can straight away uh, take this value and write it here. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!